and what I saw here was extremely horrifying and I was legitimately frightened when I saw this. What's going on? It's Sean. We're back at it again. And in today's video, we're going to do a story time video. You're going to find out how I crashed my drone, how I almost died, and something very, very frightening that I stumbled upon in searching for the crashed drone. So if you're ready, let's get into it. Nerf this! So before I start the story time video, I'm going to ask you to give this video a big thumbs up and make sure you subscribe and turn on the post notifications so you won't miss a thing. With that out of the way, let's jump right into it. So the story begins me flying the drone. And on this particular day, it was very windy. And I've flown the drone before on very windy days and I've never had an issue. But on this particular day, the drone was just no match for the wind. So I'm out at a location, not near my house, and I don't want to say the exact location uh, because you'll find out later in this video why I do not want to say that. Uh, so I put my drone up in the air, I'm getting these all these cool shots, and the drone, once I take it up high enough, starts to fly away. The wind is taking it. It's too weak to fight the wind. Now in the location where I was, the woods were all around me. So I was not able to lower the drone to get underneath the wind. And the motor of the drone was just not strong enough to fight back. So the drone is about a half a mile away. And the battery life is being drained ever so slowly. It's just hovering in the air. The wind is taking it. So I decide to get in my car and drive after it. By the time I reach the approximate location of where the drone is, the battery has died. And when the battery is like on 1%, the drone that I have will lower itself automatically to prevent running out of battery completely and crashing. So, uh, the drone is lowering itself. Uh, I have it on GPS mode. I don't have it on the face mode or the camera mode to see what it's seeing because it's too far away at this point. So it's lowering itself and I'm trying to chase it. So the drone has finally landed itself somewhere. Um, I finally catch up to it, and the place where I get out of my car is in front of a cemetery. This is the first thing that's trying to deter me from finding this drone. So I'm walking through the cemetery, I'm trying to be respectful and conscious and not step on anyone's grave. I make it past the cemetery and I start walking through these woods. Now these woods are infested with thorn bushes, I'm finding ticks on me, I'm throwing them off. I'm walking over these log bridges, jumping over brooks, walking through creeks, and every step I take, I'm looking down at the GPS tracker to see where the drone has landed. Now, I'm coming towards the end of the woods, and again, looking down at, at the GPS, looking up, down at the GPS, looking down at the GPS, I hear this huge crackle, and... I look up. I don't know what caused me to look up. Maybe it was that crack. Maybe it was God. But I see a tree, probably the size of a telephone pole, coming, crashing down on me. So thank God I had the reflexes to jump out of the way. But this tree would have killed me if it landed on me. And I thank God that, you know, I had the awareness to look up when I heard that noise and get out of the way. And like I said, it was super windy that day. That's how windy it was. It was blowing trees over. Now at this point, I almost turn around. However, I'm getting towards the end of the woods. And at the end of the woods, there's this big rock wall. And on the other side of the rock wall, there is this big open field. And in the middle of that open field, there's like this huge sand dune slash rock pile in the middle. By the way, if a tree falls in the woods and there's no one around to hear it, I'm pretty sure it makes a noise. I'm walking towards this rock wall, and I figure if I turn around now, I'm going to have to go through more woods than I would if I just go and, and continue on to find the drone. This was strike two on, you know, me not supposed to be finding this thing. I get to the rock wall. I'm about to pull myself up over it, put my leg on it, and I look over and what I saw here was extremely horrifying and I was legitimately frightened when I saw this. It was a dead dog. 
and this dog was more fresh than not. It had a huge slice down like where the sternum would be in the chest and it wasn't like exposed bones or anything. It it looked like a mix or a mutt dog. Um, the closest thing I can uh, you know compare it to was like it was a short haired dog like a like pit bull fur. It had pit bull ears like before you would crop them. And it had like the face of like like a corgi, like those like little narrow faces. And dude, it, it was scary. That's like psychopath. Um, but again, I figured, you know, do I risk another tree falling over and actually killing this time or do I continue on? So re reluctantly, I, I hop over this rock wall, hop over the dog. And as soon as I make it on the other side of the rock wall, I look to my left, look to my right, and on my right, I see this like old trailer, uh, more like a Winnebago, in the middle of this field, in the middle of the woods, in the middle of nowhere. And I got even more frightened then because I'm like, oh my god, did they kill this dog and just left it here to die? So I immediately go the opposite way of the trailer and start walking down the rock wall. I come across more bones. Now, if they were animal or not, I can't say for sure. However, most of them did look like smaller animals. Um, now, normally this wouldn't really frighten me, but where I saw the dead dog, it was a legitimately dog. It wasn't a fox. It wasn't like a coyote or anything. This was a dog, like a dog, a domesticated dog. And those other pile of bones, there was like almost like a um, like a full rib cage. That was definitely animal. Um, but there was another pile of bones uh, near it. Um, I'm no vet. I'm no coroner or anything like that. So it's tough to say, especially where you got like. Texas Chainsaw Massacre type trailer <laughs> in the middle of the woods. Um, so I looked down at the GPS, the tracker, and I'm, I'm close to where the drone is. Um, I was hoping that it landed in the middle of this field. Um, but because I saw that trailer and immediately went the opposite direction, uh, I realized that I was also walking in the opposite direction of the drone, meaning that the drone was located near that trailer. So, I turn around and, you know, against my better judgment, um, this being the third or maybe fourth strike of me, like God telling me not to go after this drone, this is like something straight out of a horror movie, man. I do the stupid thing and I'm like, I came this far, I'm not leaving without it. So horror movies may be more realistic than you think. <laughs> I go back towards the trailer. Now, that big huge sand dune slash rock pile I was telling you about, I kind of like position myself to stay out of the line of sight of that trailer. Um, and I'm walking towards the drone. I finally get to the exact marker of where that drone supposedly landed. Now, whether it had landed there and someone took it or the wind kept taking it and you know it had just died so you know it, it wasn't the exact location the drone did not land there or if it did land there it was it was taken from me and um i think i honestly think it, it must have like got stuck in a tree somewhere uh when it was trying to land itself but i didn't find the drone and so i'm searching through more woods different, you know, piles of like thorns and looking up in the trees seeing if I can find this thing and I can't and the whole time I'm doing this I have this like extreme anxiety that like whoever's in that trail is gonna come out and like murder me so I did spend a good half hour looking for it and you know the drone was expensive it was like 1200 bucks and it did have a crash warranty on it uh, that had expired so I wanted to you know at least get it maybe I could repair it maybe only a propeller was broken or something but I didn't find it. Um, so as soon as I, I stopped looking for it, um, 
I take one last look at this trailer, and I didn't see anything or anyone, but just looking back at that trailer, like I'm getting goosebumps, I'm getting the chills right now just thinking of it. I booked it home. I booked it home. I got out of there. I ran all the way back to my car, um, and I didn't tell anyone, and I don't want to tell anyone, and when I say anyone, I mean like authorities or anything, because... I don't know, man, but that's, dude, that is legitimately scary, because, like, that's, like, psychopathic behavior, like, killing animals like that, I don't even know how they got that trailer in there, man, like, what the hell, like, that's, like, wrong turn status, like, I know I'm dropping a lot of horror movies on you right now, like, Texas Chainsaw, wrong turn, but, like, I guess if I had to compare it, like, that's what it felt like in the middle of the woods, in the middle of nowhere, and I'm expecting, like, this mutant to come up and, like, <laughs> end me. Ah, oh, man. And, and it's it's so crazy because it all, it's almost like there was, like, a higher power, like, telling me to not keep going. Like, think of everything I ran into. First the cemetery. Then the tree. Then the rock wall. Then the dog on the other side of the rock wall. Then the more bones. Then the trailer. Like, how many more signs do you need, genius? Now, here is the kicker of this entire story. So... Two days later, um, let me take a step back. So this was a really nice weekend. It was like 70 out. So there were ticks out, like I was saying, I was throwing ticks off of me. Um, two days later, I had this itch on my back, on, on my butt cheek, and I'm like, what the heck is that? And I'm like, oh, I got a scab or something. So I'm like picking at it, you know, my butt cheek is like really itchy. And then, like I'm catching something. I'm like, dude, is this a scab? Like, did I get like pricked by a thorn here? So, I turn around in my mirror, I hike my pants up, and I see a little black dot, and I'm like, what is that? That's not a scab. So, I'm like, oh my god. I start feeling it, I'm like, oh my god. It's a freaking tick on my ass, dude. So, I yank this thing out. Sure enough, tick. Throw it right in the toilet like a dumbass. I'm like, damn, dude, I should have kept that, because I don't know what kind of tick it was. I don't know if I'm going to get Lyme disease. So, I didn't die from the tree falling on me. I didn't die from the serial killer out in the woods, but I could die from a tick bite. So, I ended up going to the doctors. Uh, they gave me some antibiotics, and I ended up being fine, as you could see. But it's just crazy, man. Like, how many signs do you need not to keep going? And sometimes you just need to listen to your intuition. But <laughs> that's the end of my story. Um, I will never go back there again. I will never forget that scenario um and again i didn't want to alert anyone i i don't know it's none of my business <sighs> thank you for watching i hope you got some entertainment value out of this video uh this story time video these talking head videos aren't going to be typical i used to do them a lot but um i do have other things going on in my life so you know i can't vlog 24 7 um, but the more support I get on the channel, uh, the more I can do. So if you could share this with a friend, leave a comment or a like, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much. I will catch you next time. Signing off. Stay out of the woods.